hey guys welcome back to the first episode of our sql series so in this particular episode we're going to be understanding the basics of database and understand why we need to learn sql and what is the real world use case behind it because whenever we start learning about any programming language or let's say sql we only focus on the syntax how to use them how to select data and insert data and all the other things but most of the time we don't focus on understanding why the requirement why there is a requirement of the sql what you will do in the real world what is the reason what is the reason you are using sql on the first place why not something else so we're going to be understanding everything about that particular thing in this video so this is really important video so make sure you understand this particular topic because once you understand this then you will have much clear idea about how to use sql in real world and you will have the clear understanding of why you are using sql on the first place so let's get started now if you understand the history of storing data right uh, still people use the papers and files everything to store data so if you go to any government office or any any old office they used to store all the data in the paper so they used to write everything on the paper now they wanted to organize that particular thing so they created files and folders and they used to store that all the information in the rack so if in case they want to find out let's say 2013's data and the information about some person so they will have to go to each and every file and look for the 2013 and let's say they are finding the id 49 the person's id is 49 or something then they will have to go inside the file and they will have to manually find the 49 file and they will have to get the information so you see the storage requires a lot of space like the space to store the paper and files and everything and it takes time to retrieve the data but earlier people used to use like papers and like files to store data uh, people still use that like a lot of uh, if you go to any government office like very old offices they still use that for the paperwork but again the industry is moving so a lot of companies now don't use papers they generally use uh, online documents to store and everything so this is the how everything started now there is like long history behind this but i just want to give you the idea in brief to understand how the storage used to work and how storage works now now back let's forward it for let's say like like 10 to 15 years then we started having like computers and the computers we started having like different file base so if you skip some of the things if you want to go in detail i will provide the links in links in the description but then we had like some software so inside the computers we have like excel microsoft excel or access so this is basically the tabular format this is the way you store data on your uh, pc so you have like rows columns you create a spreadsheet you will store everything in a uh, all the data will be properly structured now the problem with this is that it is good for the beginner like if the company is new or if you just want to store some some of the small data but if you want to scale it then you will have difficulty because there are some limitations on excel mm -hmm. and also you it is really difficult to find things so you will have to like control you will have to press the control f to find the particular id and everything and I will have to divide each and every month's data to new sheet and each and every year's data to new different files. So it gets really difficult to manage these files, the Excel file, but many companies still use Excel uh, or if the, they're getting started with the data management or data driven architecture, they start with the Excel to store the data. But there are different ways you can use some other software and the, that we will look into that after this. So as you understand, like first we had like traditional way of storing data like paper files then after some more technical technological advancement you started having excel access and all the other software so these software still you are getting used for some of the use cases but as we talk about the big data these softwares are not up to the mark because if you want to store like terabytes and petabytes of data you can't even handle that much amount of data on these software so for that we have different way now the database management system was created so it is basically a software where you can actually create database and create your tables write queries and easily retrieve whatever the information you want so like there are a lot of dbms systems are available such as mysql postgresql ms sql oracle and many more so these softwares give you the same functionality but features might be different to different based because products are different so you will get the different products but the way you use this software, the language you communicate is the same. So in the DBMS system, we have like two things. One is the relational database and non-relational, or you can say SQL and NoSQL. So in the relational database, we're going to be mainly focusing on the relational database in this case because we are working with the SQL, SQL script. 
so we are mainly focusing on the sql script so in the relational database you have the rows and columns and you store your data you create the relationship between different tables such as the primary key foreign key and all the other concepts will come when you are using that so we're going to be mainly focusing on relational as you can see over in relational is more structured but on the no sql side you have the key value pair column family graph document all the other databases come into that if you want to store data into key value pair then you can use no sql but if you want to store data into proper organized form then you will use the relational database and you will use mainly sql to communicate with that so sql is a structured query language that we will understand now the structure of the relational database so this is what we call the data model a data model is basically like a visual representation of how your data looks because you you're not going to let's say if you have like 10 different excel files now if you want to understand how these files are connected with each other so we have like uh, students teachers exams and all the other information now if you want to connect the students with the exams marks and everything you need to have like this entire schema of that and that you can easily visualize so that is the reason we create the data models so over here you can see like we have the sessions the participants so each participants like basically the participants have like id on the session so session is basically when you go to any uh, website you it, it creates a session for you that you will so session is basically when you go and log into a website let's say facebook or linkedin or any other it will keep your session and how much you how much time you spend on that particular website what you do all the data will get stored using your particular id or it can be your email id or it can be your unique username so it will get stored based on that and you can easily access it whenever you need that information so this is so this is what we have about the relational database now let's understand the entire structure how the database management system works from top to bottom because it's not just about writing sql queries it's more about understanding the end to end architecture because so you don't have to be a guy who just understand the sql queries and write sql queries you also need to understand how databases work how to create schema uh, tables and how to create the architecture so it is really important that you understand this structure before actually start doing the sql queries so first of all we have the database management system now dbms is basically is kind of like the software okay which is uses for data management so the example of the, those are like we already looked into like mysql postgresql like ms sql oracle these are the softwares created by like these companies so this is open source this is open source this is created by microsoft each of each of them have different features different architecture behind the scene but they all serve the main purpose is basically storing your data one might be fast one might be slow one might have this particular advantage one might, might have like different advantages disadvantages it's different but the end goal of these database management system is to store data now how does it store data inside each and every dbms we have databases so databases are basically organized collection of data so it can be accessed easily now we have a dbms inside that we have the database so database are like a logical when we do the hands on practice you guys will understand how to create database so inside the database we might have schema now schema is a named collection of tables so let's say if you want to store a uh, company information into different schema so let's say inside one company you will create like uh, let's say the company name is xyz so you will create a database so you will create the database for the company xyz inside that particular database you will have different departments so you what you can do you can create a schema for let's say hr department accounting department then what would you have finance department and then it department so you will create a schema just to segregate those different departments so that you can easily understand different tables stored in that particular schema so in one particular schema you can store multiple tables so the schema is basically collection of tables and tables is basically collection of data stored in rows and columns so as you can see over here we have like the employee employee name city phone number employee id these are the different columns and we have different rows like all the information of the employees such as anna jackson all you can see the store like city is stored phone number is stored so this is basically the way tables are organized so as you can understand we have the dbm is like data management system then we have the databases inside that we have the schema and we have the tables this is simple architecture and this will you will find in most of the uh, dbm system now in this tutorial series we're going to be mainly using postgres sql now why we're going to use postgres sql because it is open source it's easy to understand it also has like 
good UI interface and that will I'll show you how to install everything but this is open source and it is free so everyone can use it you don't have to purchase anything you just go on to Postgres website and download it so I'll show you how to just install this so what you need to do is just go to Postgres SQL policy windows okay so we have like two different things one we're gonna be installing the postgres sql server so you can just go to postgres website just click on the download installer and it will download based on your operating system just click and download that particular system and the installation process is pretty simple okay you can just go and click on the postgres sql guide i also have the video on how to install postgres sql in one of my project series so i will link that video down in the description but you can check it but the installation is pretty straightforward you just you just download this particular software and install it once you install it, you will have the Postgres server running on your system. So it will run in this machine, like whatever the machine you are using. Now, if there are two different ways you can access the Postgres. One is using the terminal. So, so there are basically two different components. One is your Postgres SQL running. So you can use the terminal to understand and access the Postgres. So you, what you can do is just write uh, Postgres-V and it will give you the version of the Postgres that is installed. That means you have the Postgres server running and then you can write p sql postgres to access the postgres database so i can write the create database and all the sql query over here so now working with the terminals is pretty difficult if you are a beginner because you will have to learn all those commands such as uh, if i go to postgres terminal commands so these are like different postgres sql commands that you can go and check in the documentation and you will understand it but the second way is using the user interface. Now user interface basically means using the PG admin. So once you install your Postgres, what you need to do is you need to go and download PG admin. Okay. Uh, so PG admin, you can go download and download this PG admin for uh, based on your operating system. So if you have Windows, download it for Windows. If you have Mac, download it for Mac or if you have any other source. So you just download it, you install it. And once you install it, you can go to PG admin open the pg admin console and you can basically so you can basically install the pg admin then go over here create a server now over here you can just write localhost localhost basically means you are connecting to your local server then again over here you just have to write localhost and i mean localhost and just connect it uh, enter your password while you were uh, basically installing the postgres sql server and you will be able to connect it now if you are not able to connect it i mean i'll, I'll just watch the link in the description uh, i will give you the entire tutorial guides how to install this particular thing and once you have it running then your, your postgres sql is good to go then you can basically right click uh, on to so yeah i'll show you that particular thing so over here we have the server and inside the server we have the database so these are different databases right so let's say if i go to this dvd rental database so inside the dvd rental database i have the schema inside the schema okay i have like multiple schema like as we talked about so in the schema we have like schema for accounting finance hr management it department so i have the one is a public schema but you can create the multiple schema and inside the public schema you have the tables so inside the tables you have might have the multiple tables so this is how the entire structure looks and we will understand this particular things once we deep dive into that so don't worry about it right now but this is how the pg admin works so from the ne next video we will start querying some of the data we will start uh, working on the SQL because this video was just to make you understand how these things work uh, how the basics of the databases but from the next one video we will start just hands-on practice about how to create tables create databases then you know do the basic SQL queries and basic syntax then we will go all the way to the advanced concept so thank you for watching this video if you learned something new then make sure to let me know in the comments like this video that will help this channel to grow and reach more and more people Thank you. See you in the next video.